Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another quick tutorial in Cubase. This year I got the opportunity to do something I've never done before in audio, and that was to master a audiobook. And it was an enlightening experience, and I learned a lot about the functioning of Cubase and a few features that really saved my butt. And one of those was cycle markers. So today I'm going to show you how I use cycle markers in uh, mastering an audiobook and how you can use it to keep long projects uh, organized in your own head. So let's just jump into Cubase and I'll show you how. So the difference between an audiobook and an album is that this particular audiobook was 43 chapters long. I wanted to maintain an uh, era of semblance between the chapters and have a, you know identical processing on the mastering chain. So I loaded them all into one project, but how do you keep them all straight? Well, I did it with cycle markers, and you can see the cycle markers here. VO chapter 17. That was... Uh, the way that the client wanted delivery of each of the individual files. Now the metadata was baked into those files specifically with author, title, maybe chapter name, book name, etc. So that's a different tutorial. You'll have to do your ID3 tags for that. However, if we also look down here at the clock, if I go to the end of the project, it is eight hours and 19 minutes. Um, so that's a lot of audio to be working with. So being organized is key. Uh, and one way you can do that is with cycle markers. So how do you create a cycle marker and how do you organize it? Well, I'll show you how I did it for this specific project. Um, let's just add in a new event here. If you click on the event that you're using, this will be your specific chapter and you hit the P key in Cubase. I don't know what the how to get to it from the mouse. I always just use the hotkey. It will create your locators around the events. So if we shorten the event and hit the P key, the locators will shorten. If we make the event longer and hit the P key, the locators will find their way around this event. From there, we can add cycle markers simply by hitting the second marker button in a marker track. So that, that's the add cycle marker button right here and we have a cycle marker, but that's not where it ends. In order to stay organized, I used cycle marker descriptions because that's how I was going to export the files. In order to write in the description, you need to have your info line up. So if it's not up, control I, at least on a PC, will bring up your info line. Then you can add a description. I'll add the description brand new chapter. And I'll show you where that comes into play. So now we have a brand new chapter, a chapter 44, um, along with the 43 original chapters. Let's say we wanted to export all of these. Well, we can go to File, Export, Audio Mixdown. Now you'll see the cycle marker names here. Now, if there's a feature request I have for Cubase 12, which is coming out next year, it's that you should be able to select and deselect all of these. I definitely had to go in and select them one by one in order for export. Um, so we'll go back and reselect these. I don't think I'm done with this project, so it doesn't matter, but my OCD doesn't allow me to leave them unchecked. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we have brand new chapter. And we check that and it's selected. Now, if we do an export, It'll export by cycle markers, and it'll export all 43 chapters in order with their respective names. So that's very handy. But how did I get it to export the chapters with the names, as you see up here in this line, VO chapter 01.mp3? Well, we do that by going to our settings. And you can have the naming attributes, the naming scheme, be just about anything you want. I chose cycle marker name, obviously, and that, that's what worked for me. Now, as you can see, there's other ways you can choose uh, for naming schemes. But for a long project like this, where I had a bunch of cycle markers denote, denoting each chapter, cycle marker name worked as the great naming scheme. If I take this off, we'll see. Um, it just reverts to the project name. Cycle Marker Tutorial will be the name. And I believe it'll append a Cycle Marker number to each one, but I'm not sure. So, oh, conflicts. You'll have to resolve the conflicts. Create unique file name. That'll be Cycle Marker Tutorial, Cycle Marker Tutorial 1, Cycle Marker. So it's easier to go in and just say, use the Cycle Marker name. And then you'll have all of your uh, exports, all 44 exports, have the specific name that you denoted in the cycle marker description. Now, this is just a way in large projects where you have dozens of files that total several hours to keep your export strategies um, identical to make sure that you have a 
very organized naming process and to make sure that you can batch export if there's any revisions you have to make after you send it to the client. So this has just been a quick tutorial on how to use cycle markers in Cubase. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please feel free to like or subscribe and I'll check you guys in the next one. Peace.